All right, let's get a let's get this going. All right, we start on defense. We're doing a little two 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 A side two B side break off on defense. Pressure. Yeah, just an early spread setup. Trying to get a feel out of You have the two subs going B side. You have the two ARs but going A side. He's going to throw at them early on this defense. And you can see the aggression from Pred and Shotzi. That dynamic SMG duel trying to isolate. All they know Caesar's back here. They're going to try and still flank from uh from blue, though. Now Sky says, all right, come my way. Brandon somehow wins one top the offense. This is that's just gunny right the there. Now Sky says, all right. Because they're able to get this initial control onto the stage. Come my way. That's, that's just a huge one to win. Ken gets traded, but before the smoke pops, Brandon's able to get the trade on Paco. Now you still have number two and number three, Paco and, and Ant. Or sorry, Paco and Ant. AG and Ant pushing the, the flank. They get a free kill on the flank. Last guy live in that trade battle is Kiz. He's going to try and plant the bomb, but it, again, it's 2v1. Both these guys flanking for us. And I already love the play call right there from Optic Texas on their first defense. Kismet now left in the 2v1, and we saw this spot all throughout challenges trying to stack that. He gets one on Ant, but he's a little bit weak, and AG is able to get the trade. It could have been scary, but AG AG is able to get this this nice trade. He knows he's gonna try and gun him. Really big round one. Again, we were the last place on defense and retakes. That was our first. I think it was our first six-star retake of the entire year. Over Statue. What, our defenses were really the, the big problem on this map. Five, multiple first slugs. He's able to find it there. You back down the player who's watching that pinch, but eventually way too much pressure out of Pred and Shotzi. Skies is committing on this flank play. Dashy has to hold his ground firmly for him to find the first blood. Critical. So they go with a standard 1-2-1. One, one. That's normally what you see. Sometimes you'd see like eight counters, but I feel like 1-2-1s one, were like the main default if that's what a, if that's what you want to call it you have brandon here he's in blue the rest of the guys are going to be going towards the a side he gets stunned i think this this was the play he's going to intentionally get stunned and then back off so that in case they do try and get positioning towards blue uh he's backed off watching the pinch while the rest of these guys can try and hit out through the stage obviously they still have to care they're you and stuff but you know with their positioning with you know how kids would really like to play getting pushed into our blue or into our plat stairs you know they're going to be trying to to look for brandon here here likely going to be some sort of a new york setup for potential retake forfeiting this a site for now so they have no one in a site we do see you know dante back here brandon's still able to get a kill a, a, a deep pinch into the pool later in the round while we're trying to take this a side so this is a this is a crazy gunfight to win because Paco is looking at it, but Brandon's just keen on the one on one. Huge win! Now they are they're tweaking obviously about their pinch. They still have they have to pick it up. So we get complete sight control. Look at number five here. You know seven still looking. Six is kind of backed off a little bit too. So we're gonna get the plant down for sure. And anything Brandon can do here is just icing on the cake. If we can get another one, we we just win the round. And if he can just buy more time, that's just the best case scenario. Fortunately, though, Kiz is playing under these stairs. He gets the free kill on, on Brandon. But now we know basically where they're going to be coming from. Uh, not necessarily, but we do know that Kiz is blue. And we do know that Dante is, is, is deep curve. So this is what we wanted to do. So obviously you see Dante comes with them towards you side to help them out. Now they're, they're th triple stacking you. Ant's going to throw a trophy here, trying to, you know, obviously cancel out any smoke or nades that they try and put in this position. A lot of, time, like, a lot of times teams would try and uh, retake with the smoke here. So you, you throw the smoke down and then you just rush through into it. But what we're trying to do here is obviously counter that by using the trophy to, to destroy the smoke. What Ant doesn't know is that I'm pretty sure they sound hoard him throwing the trophy here. So yeah, well, they know he's like in this corner and Kiz just like runs up and, and kills him right away. And it's not enough time for Ken to be able to uh, get the trade because, you know, Ken's not looking that way to begin with. He's looking at our, our deep curve. So I, I think they literally just sound hoard Ant throwing the trophy here. And that's just really unfortunate. 
Like, cause we, we were planning on doing this beforehand, but I guess we never tested out that if you can actually get sound warp through it. So that was a, that was our bad. And then obviously Ken tries to go for the trade. They're triple stacking you and they get both those kills in the last one in AG as well. So that just, that comes down to them literally sound whoring the, the trophy and then just banging in out. Not gonna catch him slipping. They just bombard their way through mid. Because usually it's like, oh, what the fuck? He's just gonna run out of you like that? That never happens. But they just instantly sound ordered it, knew that they couldn't throw smoke because he was gonna have a trophy there. Connector basically just bang him out. Has been exquisite. Tempo? Do you just try to keep New York uncomfortable or do you let them come to you here when they're on your defensive side? It might be a little different now because they have trophy systems to work with, so. Now 2-2. Two, two. This is, I guess, uh, the number two default that teams would do where they kind of like just give up B, maybe play it late, uh, but it's just a full A counter, basically. AG, Ego Tiles and Nades. I'm not gonna lie. This is, you can't really do this against New York. He knows this. He knew it right after, you know, he tried to go for it, but you have to wait against the Nades if you don't have a trophy. Um, and he tried to ego chow it. So they just get the free first blood. And it's not able to get a kill while they're trying to cross. And they just have free side control 4v3. Ken actually does get a nade kill, which is, which is great. So it's still possible. I don't want to say it's completely chalk, but you can't obviously ego the child's nades against New York. They just have too good of nades. Similar, similar setup. Obviously, they don't have someone close with the trophy like we did, but they have someone watching the deep. They have someone watching you uh, on bomb, and they have someone watching the pinch. And we're deciding what we want to do here in this in this retake. And what we decide is we're gonna we're gonna beta smoke out. So a lot of in our vods going into champs was us trying to use the smoke, running out, failing, and that was like our retake. And it was just too one dimensional. We knew that teams would just know once we threw a smoke that we were gonna try and retake through it. But what we're trying to do here is we planned this out. It was like, we're just going to throw the smoke and just triple bang out the pinch or something and just make them use the, the smoke as, as bait. Or actually, he's, he's going to go uh, deep curve. So we're, we're hitting both sides. But we just knew they were probably going to look at the smoke and try and shoot it because that's, that's what we did in like literally every retake going into champs. And it helps out Caesar. Or sorry, it helps us kill Caesar because he turns to look and, and try and stun and shoot through the smoke too. And now he can double hit this guy through office. Easy pinch kill. Now they're kind of worried on stage because first, no one hit through the smoke. So they don't know where our third guy is, but they do know that two people are looking off us. Kismet gets a trade kill on Ken. But, you know, Brandon is still live office, and while that's happening, Ant is also still you, and he wins a gunfight on, on the bomb site. So, obviously, Kiz has to worry about both his sides. He has to chow one of them, and uh, they just know where he is, and we can just teamwork him. It's, it's just a teamwork at that, at that point, 2v1. Really good retake. So, two retakes now on defense. But it all comes out with, you know, us losing the smoke as bait because it was just not working at all during the qualifiers or during stage four so and i think the thing that's yeah, interesting that was a mind on this that was a good round Optic have isolated and bullied skies yeah. in both their defensive rounds so they're saying let's get rid of the ars first let's worry about the smgs later so put a pin in that we'll come back to all right one. mid stack out of new york they're gonna go mid towards uh towards b2 so if we were to go b it was a Office. really really bad scenario for us because they're Literally playing for a, a B counter here. They're giving up the site once again. And again, it's just going to be Brandon here, kind of lurking towards this P2 blue side while we take a, a site control. They give it up. They're going to work the retake as well. But we're just going to get the bomb down. And it's going to play the exact same spot too, which is funny. Again, same, same type of uh, post plant. You know, Ant's super close. AG on the stairs, watching the U. Deep curve by Ken. And Brandon watching the, the office pinch. 4v2, we know this guy's curve. Can Ant just run run at him. Really good offense. We're just gonna take tight control and we're just gonna play it the same way we, we were doing. Consistent, consistent way.
So a really good offense. Now we go up 3-1. We'll come to find out. It's so this is kind of just a, you know, blind mid B counter. We're going to give up A and kind of play the retake again. It's been working for us. We're, what is it, 2-2 two and two now on the retake. So if they want to go B because it's not working for them going A, this was the, the counter to that. So you have Ken and Ant going mid. Unfortunately, though, this is their mid strat. So we don't have anyone watching you or, or doing anything aggressive you so we can't get one here but this was uh we knew that they were going to do this at least once during the game this is something that they would do at least once every every map on offense where they have one uh th three people go towards mid two people jump off the plat towards you uh last guy goes like top office so unfortunately we don't send anyone a this round and they just run uh under you know or through you from the plat we can't push middle because this guy at the top plat is still watching it so it's it's just kind of all over the place we just get hard counter because they continually you know try and go a instead of going b here but again, still 3v3. We can, we can try to play the retake once again. But again, it's just it's hard to retake A. It's not like it's an easy thing to do. This is a crazy timing, by the way. Brandon, I don't think sees him in this scenario. Does he? No, no, he definitely does see him. So he does see him, but Ken's not ready for him to, you know, go towards the back left. We're able to get the trade though, but now they kind of know where we're trying to break from. It's going to be at least one guy towards this side, and they still have to look like look for the other. But what they're going to try and do here is play through the space that has been created mid. So if there's a one guy mid, they double challenge him, they kill him, and they know the other guy is full pinching. If there's no one mid, they just take the space, and now we have to look for them. So that's what they're doing here. This is, it's so hard to play against because they just take the space. Now they can play the, the, the post plan from here, from you. And it's just, it's just too hard. So really good play for them. Noticing that, taking the space where it was, where it was given mid and playing the, the post plan from there. So again, just as confident as you've seen to any point thus far through New York. And how about it again? Quick hit up through U-Haul. Stun towards the front. So U counter, A counter once again. But what we have here is Ant is going to be the one lurking. He's going to go super quick towards uh, pool to try and uh, pinch through like P3. So we're, we're office. We're kind of still playing a little stagnant towards our base. But Ant's already got through Titsiki. And they don't see anything yet A side. They don't see anything yet B side. So they're, they're probably just expecting us playing some sort of slow pick thing towards A. And so they're, they're going to eventually see us get up to the stage, I believe. Or actually, maybe they don't. Yeah, they, they know that we're probably on site. That's why, you know, Caesar nades it from here. The guys you are going to still work towards the side, try and nade it. But we're, we're starting to wrap at least AG towards the B side. And this is big info. We see Caesar try and kill AG, crossing P2 towards pool. They don't know that Ant's already got pushed up towards Siki here. He can flank Caesar on the stairs for a free first blood. While that's happening, four and uh, one, the two ARs are already pushing up through A side. We know they're probably holding or pushing through middle at this moment. So we do see, who is this? Do we see number six? Yeah, number six shoots. So we know that he's here. So Ant can go and try and kill him too. He gets shots off, but he is very, very weak. He's just going to try and smoke nade himself out, try and get out of this scenario as quickly as possible. Jesus. All right, I just took us out of the out of the play. Sorry, I'm not locked. I am not locked. I'm not locked. So he tries to nade smoke himself out, just stay alive in this scenario, even trophies himself. Number one and number four are going to try and make plays through middle because we know AG is trying to get the bomb down over here. But this is really awkward because seven and eight are already p2 so there's a chance that he can die off bomb 
But we need these guys to get kills middle for us to win this round. AG gets Dante so weak. And while that's happening, AG gets a bomb. He tries to go middle stairs to help him out. But they don't know that Kiz, is, Kiz and Paco both have already hit out through P2. He's going to get a free kill on AG here. But while this is happening, while you know, Dante is still trying to kill Ant, uh, Brandy can help him out. So Brandy gets you know, the help on Ant. Ant can now focus the bomb. And now you have Ken also breaking from the P2 side. So we're just trying to get information on where those last two guys are. We know that Kiz is towards Siki over here. Ken actually sees Paco as well, trying to... Get some help towards the pull stairs. He lines up for two. Really good offense. Honestly, the offenses so far have just been really, really solid. And this is just beautiful, beautiful work right now out of Boston, Texas. Slowing down these rounds, allowing the playmakers to make plays. Shotzi taking that ground over towards B site. Wasting a lot of time is just forcing New York to keep on thinking, where the hell are they? And it's just to get aggressive. The entire way through the All right, so we go with a mid counter of our own. So to see that, they're actually that motioning a little bit more towards B side here. Down. I'm sure it's we do see Dante, defense. so we're gonna get you know pushed up towards his blue side. But, but we kind of know that they're at B at this point. We don't see anything A, and now we're just gonna try and retake. So how do we retake here? They're already planning B. We're gonna try and retake through P3. So you know a lot of teams. They would get the bomb down. They would try and play wood or try try and play onto this hop and try and counter. A P3 break like this, but we're early to it, so they can't get up to the P3 yet. And then we're also going to have Ant kind of lurk towards this other side. And I think we're going to do the same thing this round. I, I got to remember. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, we do the same thing. We're going to have Ant smoke towards middle, kind of divert their attention away, and then break through through P3 side. Ant's looking for lurkers towards the uh, stage over here, by the way. That's what he's doing. So he, he's using this smoke to give information, or sorry, to divert, yeah, again, divert their attention away from, from P3, which we are breaking. This was just a really unfortunate calm. I think AG uh, literally, like, just shoulders this and thinks someone's in this corner. So this entire time during the break, we think someone's in this corner, but there's literally no one. We're literally looking at ghosts. So once he hard clears it, we know that no one's there. But at that moment, Ken's already dead, and it kind of screws us in this situation, unfortunately. So that just comes down to, you know, we just thought someone was there, and he just wasn't. It just wasted a little bit too much time, unfortunately. So now it's just down to Shotzi. What time he does And trying to make a play front P2. Paco just reads him. 2v2 now. They know both of us are near this hop wall. It's, just, it's too much for too little time. Because Paco would just play time here. Yeah. That's just unfortunate. It just it took way too long for us to clear that corner when we thought someone was there and no one was there. That's that's just what went wrong in that round. Miss calm. Or like miss... Uh, Misuse of I, what do you what would you even say? Misuse of the information? It's not even misuse of the information, it's just wrong information. Spreading the map initially. New York kind of default spread here. They're going for a triple stage counter. Not doing the same. They're looking to go quickly in the so that's really quick. Big kill by Ant for at least getting one there because they're going super quick on this A site. So we get the blood. Instead of wrapping to B, we're just gonna have these number four and number three also wrap with us towards the a side and try and retake uh, this a side control because we know we have numbers we know that there's a possibility they think that we're going to be trying to rotate because we've, we've given up uh showing ourselves on this a side and now we start taking stage control for ourselves and once again just got to play the post plant first we got to get the bomb down sib is still playing underneath these stairs here which is really ratty but ag finds him out so ag hitting checkout is so massive here uh, because we're able to, to kill Dante in this ra really ratty position. Now we can just get the bomb down, watch you and watch our deep curve and watch our pinch. Just try and figure out where they are. 4v2 though, so it should be, should be chill. We, still, we see both of them towards you. Just, it's just too much for them. So this 5-3, this is a really unfortunate because I thought we were going to win this search like we were playing this so well especially the offenses i don't think we have we lost an offense this this map i don't i don't think we have the pressure's sort of going to be here but that bomb's going down at b yeah 
how to change their defensive look. And yes, they do. So we go for a full stage uh, counter. Unfortunately, though, they're already at B. So they just went with the B hit. They're already getting the bomb down. This time, they're pushing through mid. And I actually really like this on B hits. If you can get a B hit where uh, maybe they might send one or two guys mid, but you don't see anything and just like kind of taking control of mid while planting B and you also have a lurker with Sib towards the A side. This is so hard to deal with because look at the space, you know, Paco's able to get. He's already DJ. We're already, we're like inside P3. Dante gets a kill on Ken because he's the, the A lurker. Ant dies over here because they pushed up their own stairs. Paco's still DJ fall. waiting for someone to, you know, push through towards now P1. He doesn't see anything. He can more. even activate if he wanted to right now. He does. AG kills him. Pass. But again, 3v2 and they know both of us are towards P3 area. It's just way too hard. Left. They even see Brandon here. Yeah, free kill for them. It was but just, it was those bees that were hurting us. Those bee hits. Blind counter though, right? yeah. I mean, you get three members for Full blind counter too. Like we, we had three you stage and that just gave up more control for them because they could just hit up through the, the stairs and through mid. So that's unfortunate. Bro, that's the question. And they're going to have to get aggressive again through mid. They go with a, a mid aggression of their own through you. We kind of seen this already, 3-1. But we're going to go for a full B hit of our own. So we kind of do the same thing. We kind of try and take the stairs. We can get a free kill on Paco. Now we can try and get the bomb down. And this honestly should be a win. But uh, Brandon dies on the stairs. So that's, that's a big one. And then AG dies picking up the pinch here. So this is, this is not a good post plant. It was a good play to, to get the blood. The, the plan was there, but dying like this, and I, I, I think, eight, or yeah, Brandon was pissed at himself for dying towards P3 over here, but we need to make sure that they gotta, they gotta work for this. And then AG, he tries to get back towards P2 to watch the full pinch, but this guy's already hit this. And then, you know, Ant tries to take spacing somewhere else and they just, they, they play for him. So not the, not the greatest post plant. We, we 100% should have won that round. That was, in my opinion, the round, or sorry, the, the map ending round, or, or should have been. So losing this map after that scenario was annoying for us. So round 11. They're on offense. We go with 2 1 1. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to have Brandon and AG go through outer, and we're going to have Brandon watch over him pool while he just gets into Tiki. And if they go B, AG's going to be hitting over here and he's going to be a hard clear. Or if they go A, you know, Brandon's going to end up wrapping. We're going to try and see if we can, you know, maybe get some control over here, and he'll either late play. Uh, through p2 or late th play through mid or if they end up wrapping to b that's the perfect scenario because he's already there they're not expecting him to be pushed up into tiki just hitting like this but in this scenario we're basically giving up the a site and they're not hitting b so this is again almost too much of a blind counter because now ag just has to pinch like he just normally would have uh, but this is more so if they were going to go b which was what was working for them and that's why we wanted to do that uh, but they go a does Optic want to play they end up not getting the bomb down instantly because we had waited for our nades to retake. And we're in another retake scenario. So they're playing super tight. One guy check out. One guy on bomb. One guy watching you from the stairs. One guy watching the pinch. We're kind of breaking from all sides. One guy's still you. One guy's going to be deep. Seconds left. We're kind of waiting for AG and Ken to make some sort of play towards the, the office first. And I love this play. AG goes super deep. So him and Ken are trying to work this, teamwork this. They get the kill office. This is a good play by Paco activating them. So Paco activates off of this information that Sky sees too here. So he's just really quick onto this. And with this quickness, that's going to allow number six to now turn for you. So they're not like giving anything up anymore because they had two people watching you. And number seven was just going to be the guy to be watching their deep curve. So 
you know, instead of having the guy on stage watching the Jeep curve, they have this guy over here watching it. So Paco, really good activation. He can help this out. They get the, the trade. Also, Dante turns around, kills the guy top office. So now the last two guys alive are just the two people that were waiting to activate. And they can just play off of that. They see this last guy, Brandon, here. Unfortunately, we do not win that retake. So honestly, I thought we were playing like majority of that map well. We were playing it much better than we did in stage four.